Hi, and welcome to 20 Questions. I'm Kim Hai from Her Tribe Within. And I'm Joey Buzzitall from The Secret Men's Business. Welcome to 2021. Oh, it's so awesome. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, because it's really February, this is our first catch-up, isn't it? I know, but don't you feel like New Year only really began in February? I feel like I ever saw you yesterday. That's the weird I thing. I do like the yeah. fact that even you've invested in a green screen, so I'm really impressed. Well, oh, I've, had... I've, I've become Ian Leslie from 60 Minutes. <laughs> you look awesome. <laughs> you, look like you're, you look like you're in a spa or something. You're, well, you're, no, what you're well, wearing, I... your hair. It's like you're in a, you know, I feel like I need to hear pipe music. I'm going to go get, get a facial and a, a foot massage and I've got my hair in a ponytail. I'm all up, I'm all up and about for 2021. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> So today we're going to do 20 questions and we're going to base our questions on 2021. And we left that open, so it could be anything. Um, like, can I just ask you, this is just not even a question of 20 questions, but do you feel like 2021 has been good or bad so far? It's been, uh, I, I haven't actually even got a word for it. It's been sluggish, hasn't it? It's been, yeah. been confusing. It's been just, I guess we had expectations and now we're just sort of like, what is happening? Oh my God, that's a good word. Yeah, I feel like I'm on a water slide and then, when I got to 2021, they ran out of soap. So I, I'm stuck on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm thinking, hold on. I was yeah. going really fast before. So That is a great description. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think your expectation, I don't actually think of that. I, you know, I thought, yeah, I didn't think of that. That's a good way to see it, that we all have this expectation it's going to be a relief and it's just The curve is supposed to lift, but it hasn't really. It hasn't. <laughs> okay, Miss Kim, you can start. What's your first question? Okay, so um, I'm going to start with a question about you personally. Um, now, I know that last year was a, a really different year, um, and you spoke a lot about it being um, this global awakening. You were discovering incredible things about yourself last year, and it was wonderful to watch it unfold. So, you know, have you reached the pinnacle of all that? What do you feel like your focus can be now for 2021? I, you know, listening to you talk about that, I had this like memory going, oh my God, I was motivated. But I think the sluggishness and the water slide thing has made me, um, I don't feel the same energy, but I know it's still there. Like, I feel like I need to reboot. Like, um, yeah. you know what I mean? Like every, even like with Secret Men's Business, like it was like, as soon as the, the new year started, it's like it gave permission for people to tell you that they're leaving or they're coming or they don't want to do this or you know what I mean? It was like that number represented the change. And so I think part of me is absorbing the, that skill. Yeah. Because I still believe that 2020 was a good year for me, but I don't know how, to, I don't know how I, could, I feel about 2021. Well, I feel like your 2020 was such a good year for you. I'm fascinated. It's the, the how best how year. It could, how it could grow from here is going to be so exciting to see. Well, I know I can tell you stuff on paper. Like, yeah. you know, I know that, like, when I look at my podcast interview list, it's probably – going to six star rather than five star people like so I know that's been good I know that I've just you know tomorrow which I know this is recorded in advance but tomorrow we launch our tv show you know yeah. the back room so that's exciting so there's all this stuff on paper but in regards to my feelings I feel you know what I read an article and this is a good way for me to explain it is that they said that until March we're going to experience COVID fog and I think that's what I'm I think I've got COVID fog um, right, these are awesome things. COVID fog rebooting. I love that too. Yeah, like I just don't feel like it's. I'm ready. I feel like I'm still asleep. Yeah. So yeah. ask me in March. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's when 2021 should really start. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you get rid of January, February. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you know that you know in in mental health or sort of spiritual psychology world that every seven years we physically as humans go through changes and they're more, you know, logistical and emotional changes. So if you think about it from one to seven, you know, you're learning all that stuff. Then from seven to 14, you're going into another stage and teenage years to 21. So you have to at 2021, it's like a seven number. So what do you think is, and I'm going to ask it for you personally, okay, what do you think your change cycle is? So it means that you're going to be a different person for the, or a different energy for the next seven years. And it's a really good question to ask me this year because it's also my eldest. So I've been a mum for seven years now. Wow. And, and this is the year that my youngest child goes to school. So yeah. not to say that that gives me immense freedom, but there's a shift happening for me, definitely. Um, yeah. 
Can I, you describe it though, like what that means? I can describe what it means. It means I'm starting to remember who I was before. I'm starting to um, dance to songs I'd forgotten about. I'm starting to um, remember what it feels <laughs> like to, to run and move and spend some time with me. So for, for the male listeners who may not be cluey, like what did that, so the first seven years you were, when you said I'm finding myself, do you think that you were disconnected? I I think I was, I, yeah, possibly disconnected to my core. Yeah, I think so. I like, and not in, that, just, that sounds like a really bad thing to be, but it was because I was pouring all my energy into these. Yeah, things. maybe we change it to the fact that you were focused on this child. Yeah. And, have, and as, a, as, a, as humans, we have to look after. And now at seven, do you think your, your child is able to be independent? I do, I do, and they, and probably earlier. But for me, it sort of has come into this wonderful spot now. And a lot of what I've discovered about myself, I've learnt from them. But now I get to really explore that, and I get to yeah. sort of steer myself rather than just running after myself, which mm. feels really lovely. Yeah. Are you able to look historically back at your seven year cycles? Like, you know, uh, have you ever done that? Have you ever gone and looked at all the, you know, when you've gone, okay, what happened to me when I was 21? Oh, that's right. Well, because if you look at it, like some really major events happen at those years. And it's interesting to think why. I wonder how that happens, like, but organically. I know. And it, it always is, isn't it? Like the seven year itch, you know, like yeah. seventh wave is the biggest when you go surfing. Like, seven is a massive, by nature, it just happens that way. Yeah. yeah. I haven't yeah. unpacked my past, but I might do that tonight, Joe, and just sit down and check my little seven year <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, my turn. Now, um, I'm going to ask you, being from Secret Men's Business, so um, I often think of you as being my expert on all things men, other than obviously my husband. Um, <laughs> what do you see, and I think we should go for, um, I don't know, we'll do it globally, the biggest challenge for men in 2021, whether that's mental okay. health. I really know what? that answer. Like I've thought about this I'm the sure last few you. weeks. So, again, I just want to tell your listeners that this is just a global opinion that I think all men are having secretly, and I'm just going to share it with everyone, right? So I think that leading up to 2020, uh, leading up to 2019, 2020, we went through, you know, a lot of exposure, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of exposure like Me Too and Black Lives Matter and you know, people getting caught out and people, you know, noticing that behaviour wasn't applicable. Yeah. So we went through a lot of change, right? And that was good and bad. So yeah. I believe that 2021 is the year that men get back who they are. Because to get to go through that process, there had to be a, de a deconstruction. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So what, what I mean by that is like, hi, like let's use hi, uh, Harvey Weinstein, right? So when that happened, I think every man felt the shame. And yeah. so we all had to... There was this deconstruction, then we had to rebuild, and then we got pulled down, and then we had to do this. And then there was this, what, how do we act? And that's not, you know, there was a lot of misunderstanding as we changed the landscape. And so what I hear a lot from clients and people in men's groups is we're confused. And so I think yeah. 2021, because 2020 was the year of the men's mental health movement, and now 2021 is going to be the year that we burn our undies. <laughs> But it's that, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think that we're just getting we're gonna we went we lost ourselves and now we're pulling everything. We're doing lucky we're pulling this lucky dip out to build the ideal man after what we have to learn. Okay. So, you know what I mean? Because a lot of men I don't like the fact that men say they're scared. No one should be scared, right? Or yeah. uncomfortable, or men should be you know, I think yes, men should be appropriate, men should be respectful of women. But yeah. To be saying that they're scared is not something I guess you want either. No. Do you? No. So I think that we, there's going to be the year that we, and, you know, we're going to do that as men together. We're going to learn. I think it's going to be a very good, you know, experience of unpacking it all and hopefully impressing you. Yeah, you know? well, that would be excellent. And, and not keeping any secrets hidden would be my my wish. Well, you know, I would love that. But the reality is, is that, you know, like, I still, you know, men are still emotionally disabled, like some men, like, you know, some people, you know, and the biggest, my wish for 2021 for that whole thing is for men to no longer say, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, okay. I don't know, I think is, I don't know is an easy card, isn't it? So if men could say, yeah, yeah. yeah I, okay, you know what? I'm going to try and know. So yeah. that's, that's what I hope will 2021. Oh, I like that. Yeah. The biggest yeah. The challenge card is trying to get everyone on board. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because it's conditioned, isn't it? So it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. But also, it, it also applies to the other side, don't forget. Of like, course. You know, like everyone has to realise that everyone, men and women, have been fractured. You know, yeah. I think the whole side thing has to stop. I get it that it's unfair to be unequal and it's unfair that, you know, all that stuff happened with sexual discrimination. But at the same time, right, like, um, I know this is off the topic a bit, but like, you know, men don't have any advocacy for domestic violence at all, zero. Uh, so the uh, man gets bashed and the police come, they instantly go to the woman who bashed him and she gets everything. So that's that little thing alone is, you know, we need to still heal on both sides. Sorry, I've been yeah. talking about this for hours. <laughs> yeah, no, but I agree with you. But, and um, we'll probably get into it a bit more, but I think working as um, one world full stop is probably what we need to do we need to stop saying you're this you're that you're that you've been you're disadvantaged because of this like okay you are and we respect that and we need to help support um any damage that's been done but we can't do that if we're always pointing the finger we need to actually work together i like that yeah yeah it's like yeah it's like you know come on we're mature and been around long enough to know that by blaming we never solve anything you know, like, we can't just keep repeating the same things over and over again, but just calling it different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, there has to be a point where people realise that there is a better way. Because, and I was thinking of, a, a, when you just said that about it being on both sides, um, I was doing a talk on the weekend and somebody said to me, oh, yeah, because women have been conditioned um, to learn not to ask for what they want. And I said, that's really interesting. I would say that humans have been conditioned to not ask for what they want because yeah. would you not have that same conversation about men? So in yeah. a way, yeah. we've been conditioned in, and we're all suffering the consequences of that. So you're right. It's I like that, actually. Yeah, that's because, like, you're right. Like, what you just said is that when we look at issues like equality and all that, it's, you know, if we simply say, because if we say women are uh, unfairly treated, right, we, then we're saying that men are fairly treated, which dismisses all the things that are, they're unfairly treated about. Mm-hmm. But when you say all of us as humans, that really makes it, that's, that's, I'm going to use that. That's, <laughs> really, that's really good because you're literally saying everyone experiences similar stuff. Yeah, that's right. Some things are more, and, driven, you know, focused on women, some things about men. Of course, they're, they're imbalanced over time, but isn't the whole thing about us to reduce the statistics full stop? Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess we get in trouble for doing too dismissive of the things that have happened. But um, yeah. but it's a different way to think about things, isn't it? A little bit more compassionate too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I knew this would be like this. I love it. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, 2021 is the year of the ox, right? So the ox represents in the Chinese calendar reliability, fairness, conscientiousness, inspiration, and uh, being there for others. So. Yeah. As a woman in 2021, what do you believe are your inspirations? What are you, how, what are you going to use to inspire your children, your tribe, your community yeah. to be inspired? So can you talk about some of your qualities that may become more stronger or more prominent in 2021? Yeah, so I think, like, I really love that. I, I've, I know it's the year of the ox. My daughter told me in a Japanese um lesson that but it doesn't actually start another two days is that yes that's that's why 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 maybe the water slide maybe the water slide's got you stuck until the 11th um so (laughs) in terms of inspiration I think and again like you it's been a sluggish start to my year but I feel this year the best inspiration you can be is to do the work yourself and of course I've I've done some of the work being a therapist that's what we have to do um but I really feel like I need to be um, I want to be so much more authentic with that so that the message is so much more um okay. pure that I give across I suppose and more more from experience um so the inspiration for me will be to move into that space of celebrating everybody's success not comparing and you know, holding grudges. Um, it moves into accepting people for warts and all and for the beauty that they just are from the inside. Um, it moves to being strong and to not accepting um, poor treatment of any human being. So what we were just talking about before, um, I've just recently had that filter on where I've noticed people are saying things they shouldn't say, 
And mm. worse than that, people are listening and just clamming up, thinking, oh, we shouldn't have said that. Yeah. This is my year of well, step. Remember last year we said that, or we talked about something similar where 2020 was about removing the band aid so everyone's got something to say, mm. right? And so the sluggishness sort of seems like everyone's sl- stopping saying stuff. And I think everyone's going through yes. a similar thing. They're processing because there's so much thrown at us. Yeah. Right. So I like the authentic thing because I think authentic is a very, it's like the, I think of being saying someone, someone saying I'm authentic is like someone saying I love you. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. can't, it's just a word unless you do it. No. I'm saying right. I look at me, I'm authentic. And then, you know, like there was an article in the paper today that I read before I called you and it was called How Coaches and Gurus Are Ripping You Off Because They Pretend to Be Authentic. Yeah, right. You know, like there's people yeah. saying that they can heal your life and they've not done a course. No. Yeah. You absolutely. know, so that's the thing. It's, it's really about how you live your life and people will be drawn to that. Yeah. How do you measure? You can't just say, I'm going to be authentic today. I think no, that you exactly. just, you, you're going to feel it, don't you? Yeah, that's right. And authentic doesn't mean well balanced, um, stable, and on top of the world. Authentic means just accepting the highs and the lows and everything that happens. Yeah. And I think our children need to see that in us, you know, because we, my next question to you is mm. a lot of that. Um, kind of flows on from this is about social media. So, mm, okay, this is good. Go on. I feel like 2020 um, has it's gone through the roof. Our digital connections, you know, artificial intelligence, as we've spoken before, um, <laughs> all of that stuff. Yeah, um, and I would love to have your perspective. And I know we're just guessing the future. What is social media going to look like in 2021? Do you see it going up through the roof or do you see it being maybe exposed for what you just spoke about? No, it's not going to be exposed. Okay. So I've, I've got, I maybe go off a little bit to come back, okay? So I did an interview recently with a guy to talk about drugs and the guy uh, is the leading expert in London. And so I asked him a question, what do you see happening how do we solve this problem with drugs? Does it go up or what? And he said something that I think relates to your question. He goes, every decade or so, we experience a product, a movement, or a phenomenon that will never go away. Okay. Right? So I said, they're going, oh. And I guess, are you saying that we can't, we'll never solve the drug problem? He goes, yes. He goes, we need to learn to accept it and live with it. So I think that applies with social media. Social media will never go away. It's just, Social media now is is the new you know the new economy. It's like, it's like you can't let it go away. It just no one will, how can we get, let it go away when billions of people are obsessed, right? So um, what I think will happen is that it'll become more interactive where everything will be about likes, and that's where um, it's going to be scary. So yeah. it'll be interactive. Like at the moment, it's just dimensional. Like I see a picture or a video, I click like, and then you measure that. But what will happen in the future, maybe not, maybe not this year, is that on this interview right now, I will see and tell you what I'm feeling. You'll know. Yeah. I can say I'm bored. I don't like that. I can write a comment while I'm talking to you, and you'll see that as we get into the glasses, as we get into all the electronic stuff that's going to come, right? So that's what I think will happen. And the scary part there is that that will then become currency. Mm. So if I've got a thousand likes, I have access to a life. You know what I mean? So that's a little bit scary. And I think it's quickly share something that goes with that. So you know, yeah, talking about being authentic. Yesterday or Sunday, I posted a picture of something personal. Yep. Did you see this post? No. I don't think so. I, I posted something personal. It simply said a really it said something said like dreamy Sunday. Yep. And then someone commented and said, as a therapist, I find this really inappropriate. Right, and it was. I sort of went. Right. Yeah, I don't. Understand. I don't, didn't understand. Like, what's an appropriate? He goes, oh, you know, you're a mentor, you're an advocate, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, and so everything that he was saying was not on the post. So everything was his assumption, yeah. his interpretation. Yeah. So I sat there going. At first, I went, oh my god, like, uh, you know, people are going to judge me, da da da. And then I became authentic, and I said, no, my vision for the future is not to have shame. And yep. as much as I don't know you very well, what you just did there was shame me to be something that you want me to be. Yeah. The question for men in 2021 is for men not to be afraid to be what they want. I'm a human, not just a therapist. Yeah. You know, yeah. I feel, I have, I have desires. 
And I don't want my life to be pigeonholed. So I want my life to be transparent, which mm. means that if I can sit there and talk about something that makes you uncomfortable, I've done my job. Yeah. yeah. You're uncomfortable right now. So I need to tell you a question. And I said to him, why were you uncomfortable with my post? Because your comment was about you, not me. Yeah. And so in that moment, I felt really empowered to go, okay, like, you know, because when I first started as a therapist, you know what someone told me? They said, never wear your, don't show anyone your tattoos. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. If you don't show anyone your tattoos, you'll, be, you'll get no clients. And I remember wearing a button-up shirt, and that lasted <laughs> two days. And then I remember rolling up my sleeves, and I felt free, and I realised, okay, I'm not going to be one of those therapists that is not real. No. No. Yeah, so social media is is also going to change with how do we become authentic without judging that. Yeah. I think, you know, when we watch all those documentaries, you realise that everything's not real. Like I saw this show, say if someone says, oh, look, you know, I'm Joe and I'm in Paris, they're only in the backyard and it ends. Did yeah. You know that? I yeah. Didn't know. Yeah. Oh, well, gosh. hello, and, I'm in a day spa. <laughs> Yeah, you're in a day spa. I'm, I'm, I'm a 60 Minutes presenter. You're a 60 Minutes presenter. Like, you know, like they had toilet seats and that's the window of a plane. Did you know that? Wow. Yeah, well, and I saw that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, if that could sort of, con, you know, likes are going to always be currency, but if that could coincide with authenticness, mm. then wouldn't it be a great thing? It would be a positive thing. Yeah. Do you worry but, about the mental health in all of that stuff? Yeah, like, but it's too late. About... It's too late now. It's like it's like climate change. We've been talking about this for years and no one listened. Yeah. Now, it's too late now, sorry. I just it's, don't you think it's too late? I do. Yeah. I think and I think for women what I see is social media really impacting self esteem and body image in a massive way. Well, massive it's crossed over to men as well. I think the men and women issues have now crossed over. You know, yeah. women are becoming more entrepreneurial and money focused, which is good. And also body stuff. And men now are obsessed with steroids and eating disorders. All because they're they, on screen all the time. Yeah. So, oh. you know, you, you, like the thing that surprises me is that if you survey children now mm. and you ask them what do you want to be when you want to grow up, mm. firstly, what did you want to be when you, when you grew up? What was your first answer to that when you were little? <laughs> Can um, I guess? Can I, I guess? I, well, go. Oh, I heard myself. I thought you wanted to be a flight attendant or something. No, a florist actually. It was a florist. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I wanted to be a library teacher. It's not weird. <laughs> I think it's lovely. <laughs> I used to have a good kid's library. Oh, but the most, 89% of children from 6 to 19 all said famous. 86%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a famous. lot, isn't it? That's a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we grew up thinking that fame was for the one percent and we needed to do something that was fulfilling before we even thought about the fame yeah yeah so i think your question and the question before is the theme of 20 i think it's it's all about authentic being authentic yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. is it my turn is it my turn it's your turn your turn yeah um so navigating through our life we've always had truth as a way to seek and measure who we are the 2021 being, I think, a big year. I think it's a big year after what we've just been through. So can you share with us your truth? My truth? Yeah, what is your truth moving into the year of, you know, moving into a high vibration and all that? Because remember, 2020 was that letting go of stuff. So I'm curious to know if you've started to reveal to yourself your truth because it goes with authentic. Because yeah. remember, 2020 and before, we were masked. Yeah, yeah. Now you're, you know, how does that now go into the truth? For you, what are some of your truths, and what are some of women's truths? Do you think? It's a big well, I think, well, it is a really difficult question, isn't it? Because you know, my automatic go-to is to tell you about the vulnerabilities I have. Um, you know, because that's part of my truth. You know, yeah. Well, and, that's, I think that's good, isn't it? To be, yeah. you know, do you think that there's a lot of, you know, it's about not wearing makeup and being vulnerable and being emotional rather than being uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, for me, that's a massive, a massive thing. Like, um, I would ideally to live my truth, um, would not care what anybody else thought of me. And if I did that, I wouldn't wear the makeup. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have all those hangouts. Well, going going with the really last like question that you gave me with the social media, do you yeah. think social media and what your what the question I'm asking you can they work together? Can we have truth? Absolutely, because you're not true. <laughs> When you're, you know, like I, I, know, I get it, but like filters and all that. How do we get through all this without 
we need to remove all those things. We do need to remove all those things or we need it to be a global movement of that actually not being cool. You know, how cool will it be when, um, I don't know, somebody beautiful and famous gets up and does their well, – Brené Brown even, you know, lots of women look up to her. She doesn't yeah. wear her makeup on her next podcast. She, you know, yeah. she just shows you think up. Any, is there any other truths that you think Kimmy will experience this year? Any other like, truths? Do, do you think that Me Too and all that will get bigger? Or do you think, you know, what do you think is going to happen with what we, where we've been in regards to where we're going? Well, I really hope, like, a, a massive part of 2021 for me, um, the Me Too thing and domestic violence is huge. Yeah. and both towards men and women. Um, so for me, that truth has a lot to do about self-worth. You know, I think some of that, um, not to say that that's the sole cause of domestic violence, it's obviously a lot, but I would love the truth to be, for women to know their strength and their truth so that they don't settle for anything, you know, less than what they truly deserve, which for all of us is great thing. So um yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a big that's a big part of it, isn't it? And and yeah. men as well, you know. Well, like you, it's, it's sort of like we're giving ourselves permission to drop. I mean, I don't think we're at the point where twenty twenty one will do it completely. You're sort of saying we, you know, we're trying to get ourselves to be just be ourselves. Yeah, and to be you accepting know? of that. Yeah, yeah, like it's going to be a big ask because we what you said earlier with the conditioning. Yeah, you know, I just been watching. Have you watched? Um, Sorry, girls, I'm figuring off topic, but have you watched Firefly Lane on Netflix? No. It's new, right? And it's, it's you know, I love watching shows about women because I learned so much. I saw much. your post about it. I feel like I know women. <laughs> well, it's 10 hours up based around these two people, these two women who are best friends, and it goes over 40 years of their life. Yes. So one is really, one comes from a really bad family, like a drug addict mother, alcoholic, and so it's her perception, and then one comes from a family that, that don't see her. She's, yeah. she's invisible, right? And yeah. so it's just seeing the vulnerabilities and the way that they've got to like, wear masks and the way that they get insecure. And yes. I, just love, I love that because that's, you know, I really think that's how men can learn. I know that not all men will watch chick flicks and all that, but, you know, we have to see that. And in this show, there is so much vulnerability and I think that's beautiful that people can just be honest. But do you see, when you watch those things, now this is my opening it up again to mm. both sides. Sorry, I know we're going on a tangent. That's all right. But when you watch those things, do you see those traits in the men you know as well? Like do you, is there yeah. a connection there that you're seeing? Like it's it's so strange that it always becomes um, about that being the women thing. Like yeah, yeah, I totally, because I, um, like, you know, again, I don't know why, but I have the ability to be both feminine and masculine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I like in the in the that. show, like the, the vulnerable, you know, the woman that's successful that is hidden has this gorgeous man that wants her to open up, and it's just you know, I I can see how he gets hurt so many times because she is so cutting, and but he doesn't leave, right? Yeah. So to me, that's a representation of the future because maybe in the future, uh, in the past, men would leave or bash her or tell her to shut up. Yeah. But because she's a strong woman, he just lets her be. You know, he sort of gets beaten up and he talks. And so, yeah, I can see but I can see all of that. I learned to be a better man by watching those things because I understand that you have to not make everything about yourself and you have to understand. Like, you know, there's a whole episode on the girl at 13 having her first period. Yeah. Right? And the way they covered it, it was so interesting. I, you know, men don't know any of that stuff. No. Right? So then, and then skip to the next episode, just having menopause. So you've got... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I I text my girlfriend and said, oh, my God, I will never, ever, ever. Like, you girls go through so much. You know, we can play because we have saggy balls. It's like, oh, my God. You know, like, it's all real and relevant and we don't know. I know, I know, I know but, there's a lot, but we don't, we don't, we don't have the amount of, of change and uncomfort and, you know, silence that you go through. And they yeah. need to be aware of that. Yeah, you know, the silence that has to happen about being pregnant and losing a child, or yeah. the silence around getting a period and not being able to share it because the guys will laugh. Yeah. That sort of stuff. When you watch that, I think because it's such an amazing book. Yeah, and so that, you know, when you watch that as a man, it it's powerful because men don't think about that stuff. Yeah. And I know, I, I mean, I wouldn't have thought about it unless I saw it. Yeah, you that's know, a lovely, so, that's a lovely. That's a lovely comment to make. I wish all men sort of took that into Well, I have to say it's because of the show, you know, because yeah. the show yeah. doesn't have, I believe the show didn't have, I believe there would have been, a, a, like, 
for example, in the periods, uh, the menstruation episode, they didn't have to show the blood, but they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. made it more that made it more impacting. It wasn't just the word; it was a girl that was covered in blood on her jeans, mm, yeah. white jeans, right? So it really hit home for me the impact yeah. because they could have simply said, "Oh, I lost my, I've got my period," or oh, "You become a woman," and then they moved on. They didn't move on. They stayed with it for like a good fifteen minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, girls watch it for the show ever. Yeah, and men watch it. I reckon. I think that sounds incredible. But there is. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that, that you know the good thing about Net the good thing about Netflix and all that is that you can watch it in one and no one knows anymore. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? It's, it's true. called secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. Oh. Um. Is it my turn? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, no. But yeah. I talked. The last question is about. Truth. I feel like we've we've actually covered off one of my questions, so I'm going to move to the next one. Oh, this is a, an interesting one or a fun one. Um. When I was thinking about 2021 and my predictions, I sort of Google researched and I came up with these great prophecies that people have made hundreds of years ago that have Must come be. to light Must, at some Mr. point. Mr. Yes, and also Vangelia Gasterova. Have you heard of her? She was a, she was blind at the age of twelve, wow. um, and we could develop this third eye for you know predictions. So she predicted that in twenty twenty one we'd actually find a cure for cancer. Um, and Nostradamus, you know what his predictions were for this year: zombies, um, asteroids, um, all these mm-hmm. sorts of things. Which I, we we I just didn't watched an asteroid this yep. after movie. I think yeah. I- yeah, it is too much, isn't it? Um, so if you were to be, let's just say I have a magic wand and you are now the great prophesizer of 2021, if you were going to pick one catastrophe, it doesn't have to be catastroph- catastrophic, it can be incredibly beautiful and wonderful, what would be the prediction you would say for 2021? See, this is how gorgeous you are. Like I, even though I feel like I'm a positive person, my prediction isn't positive. Oh, <laughs> I, I know because I still believe that we've got five years of destruction before we can go into the into the new new spiritual world. Okay. We haven't, you know, we've only been unpacking it for the last few months, really. Yeah, yeah. Have, you know, the saying of breaking, you have to break down to rebuild the phoenix yes. thing. Yep. So, you know what? You know, when you said that there's a cure for cancer, you know what? The first thing that popped into my mind what is that the the future is all about people not being sick or disabled. Right, mm-hmm. and so I watched this movie that was out recently, uh, which was an asteroid disaster movie, and these people got passes to get saved. Yeah, and one of the families that got passes, their son had diabetes, and so they were all rejected, <gasps> they all refused to go. And in that moment, I'm going, "Oh my God, this is going to be our future." It's that people that have got illnesses or conditions and all that, because as we get more and more towards curing things. The people that don't, you know, what happens to the people that don't get the vaccine, for example, right? So everyone's going to become them and us. Yeah. So that's, you know, the vaccine, cancer, all of that stuff is going to create a division because not everyone's going to be able to afford treatments and all that. So yeah. my prediction is that there's going to be a bit more fighting, unfortunately, because we haven't done it. We haven't got to the point of really exposing you know people aren't talking about the other side which is the impact yeah they're still complaining so fighting did you say more well, maybe that's not the right word there needs to be more debates and more yeah. people are going to still not agree as easily like I, I wish i could say to you everyone's going to agree and we're going to hold hands and sing songs but we're not no. we will but yeah. not yet you yeah. know and i still believe and i know this is controversial but i still believe that transgender world society is going to be the gateway to us accepting each other because when you look at the word yeah. well you know we call ourselves human her but in that community what they say is them and they and so them and they means everyone and that's what you were saying before about human now i'm not saying that we all need to become transgender but that world's going to open us up to that language to accepting yeah yeah, yes, yeah. it's just them look at you know if someone doesn't know what they are they just they and so we will start to see that in everyone because at the moment we've been conditioned to see him and her yeah, Which that's right. Away a we division, live in labels. Right? We absolutely live in labels. Smart yeah. and smart, fat and thin, him and her, yeah. gay and straight. Yeah. yeah. So there's a that that's sort fun. of is a big revolution. Yeah. Um, I watched a documentary. I love documentaries, but I watched a documentary after. Have you watched It's a Sin? That show on Stan? No. It's a retrospective of what life was like in the eighties with HIV and AIDS. Oh wow! And so it was so good, and it's yeah. probably something I think everyone should watch. It was really 
sad to see someone who's 18 discovering their sexuality and then all of a sudden there's a disease in their death, right? Mm. So there's a documentary that was made last year because of COVID mm. that created a sliding doors moment in 2020 where there was no AIDS. Wow. What would hap- yeah. What would have happened in the world if there was no AIDS and 30 million people didn't die? Yeah. And it was so good and liberating, not just from the gay perspective, but from a human perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, the world would be more kind and caring because the world was heading towards that because people were accepting gays and lesbians, but then unfortunately... This made it seem like an illness, yeah. Yeah, it made it seem like a bad thing. And so I think we're going through the same thing with COVID. We're going through it again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so my prediction is hopefully people won't make the same mistakes because once the vaccine comes out, we're going to really understand the division. Yeah. Aren't we? Yeah, we not, are. Not, not yeah. everyone's going to have it. And Ooh. you know that if you don't have it, you're going to... You, and not everybody can have it. And then, Well, I know I can't. I've got an autoimmune condition, so I can't. I've got to have another treatment. But there's that certificate thing. If you don't have the certificate, you can't work or fly or anything. Yeah, yeah. What, that, it's what, what, right. what does that mean, though? What happens if you can't work? I don't know. Do you... Uh, yeah. No predictions. There's going to be more wars, more, more arguing, more... I know that's probably not the answer you want to be to say, but there is going to be more un- unrest, yeah. unfortunately. And we've got to be mindful that we don't get distracted with other things like social media because that's the thing. There's it's reality. Taking us away from what's really happening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Sorry. Yeah. This is my situation. Beautiful. It's your turn. Oh, my turn. <laughs> um, so we, we have to look to that, all the positives and all that. But, you know, I guess if you can think deep within yourself, what do you think – women will take into 21 as baggage what things will they not let go of unfortunately um i think there was a lot of um domestic violence and domestic unrest in lockdown um and how women take that into 2021 will vary um Are you but about i the think responsing with them talking about it well, just I guess the filter that they see their relationships in, perhaps, and see themselves in. Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking about like I'm obviously severe domestic violence, like physical domestic violence, emotional, mental, um, or just feeling. Uh, they or, can't. They can't. They can't. Yeah. 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 Or the yeah, shame yeah. of what people will say. So I wonder yeah. what I wonder what that will do for women moving into 2021. Will it liberate them? I hope, or will it? Perhaps. Well, how do you see that changing? Is it through other women or is it through the system? Well, I hope it's through other women. I hope so, yeah. The system, it would be nice if the system supported it, but that's a pretty daunting, overwhelming, um, I guess, process, isn't it, to get the system? The system's a big Well, thing. the system is, it's just like, when you use the system, everything's slow. Like, you know, it's it all, is. when yeah, you look yeah. at commercials on television, I sometimes think, you know, they're telling us this really basic message, don't kill a woman. It's like, you know, we've been doing that for decades. Yeah. Like, yeah you think, it's not as simple as that. Why is, is it the message getting a cost? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so it, it's got to be an education thing. So that's that's a big thing that I think is would be great for women to take into 2021 is for us to learn from the position we're in and to teach our children, both mm. boys and girls, about the way to treat each other, male, female, race, mm. religion, shape, size, with, yeah. you know, is there anything else that you think you personally would like to see removed that you know it's going to come following you in 2021 as a woman? Like, you know, for example, anything about, the, say, the, what men do to behaviours? Like, is there anything that you might wish was gone but you know it's still going to be there? Like, for example, the way men talk to women. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, what would be, like, your wish that, that you could... Do you know, my wish would be for the nuances of um, that language to go. I would love that not to come through. So little permissive comments that we let come through or little, um, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. I watched no, a movie. Yeah, I, I get it. It's like you, know, just, you just want people to be treated normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just those little sniper comments that we still have that actually undermine somebody's belief in themselves tremendously i'd love them not to come through um and moving into 2021 i would love our our children to be on a path to be better at it all than we have been so 
how do we leave that behind in some way throughout the way we educate them? Like I know we've been conditioned, so unfortunately we still educate. My kids are still very aware of what a boy does and what a girl does and I would love to leave that behind and I'd love it to just be what we do and we all get to do it this year. But that's <laughs> the dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. All right, my turn. How are we going for time? Do we need we've how got, many? Do you... We've got. Oh yeah, we'll ask one, one question each quickly because um, you yeah, know. Okay. So I've got mine, but mine's quite succinct. My last question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. So you need to finish two sentences, Joe. I'm going to do a blank. Two blanks. Sorry. Blankety blank. Blankety blank. If 2020 was the year of the blank, 2021 mm -hmm. will be the year of blank. If 2020 was the year of adaptability, the 2021 is the year of the rocket. Yay! <laughs> hey, I like that. The rocket. The launch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Where well, mine's sort, of, mine's sort of similar as the last question. So what is your, if you had a T-shirt with a slogan on it to represent 2021, what would your T-shirt say? <laughs> so what is your slogan for 2021? <laughs> <laughs> Two things came to my head. Can I tell you the funny one first? My mum's yeah. favourite saying is nothing succeeds like a budgie with no teeth. I thought that would be Love quite it. appropriate. 2021, but, nothing <laughs> succeeds like a budgie with no teeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but realistically, I probably would like something about run with it or go with the flow or, I don't know, ride it out. I feel like there's got to be some sort of fluidity in my slogan. Love I'm going to go with the flow. Can I tell you mine? Yes, please. 2021, yes, you are in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> the red blue pill. <laughs> oh my god the other thing i know this is i'm just going back to another thing that you asked me but i also believe and i'm so sorry this is this has popped into my head i have to tell you i also believe that 2021 is going to be the explosion of robot sex sex robots Oh, that was one of my questions. I was like explosion. Ask you, I was going to ask you what you think the big shock horror uncovered thing would be, and there you go, you've just done it for. I don't think it's a shock horror, but I just noticed slowly in the last few months how male sex toys have crippled. I know. Like once upon a time we used to have a cock ring, and now we have like like we have pages like women do. Like the whole pleasure thing. It's obviously been created in COVID because you've been in lockdown. Yeah, in lockdown, yeah. So that whole thing, um, and then I really do think that there is, there's a whole sex, sex robot thing happening that we don't even realise. You're right, okay. And that's going to that's gonna be in our faces this year. Yeah. Which to I me, am a robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am that a robot. That makes it going down that dis that human disconnection path though, doesn't it? Like that, like the social no, media. I, like yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think that. Not leaning it's just, into people. I anymore. think it's an industry of self-pleasure. Yeah, okay. The robot is just, a robot is just, it, it could be added as a, as a, as a companion, but really at the end of the day, it's about satisfaction. So think about a vibrator, right? But mm -hmm. it's now become a bigger part of our life. Just like we used to have a telephone and now we have a mobile. Yeah. I don't look at it as a scary thing. I just think that we have now opened the door. And when you look inside those websites, I have, there are certain things I sit there and I can't figure out what they do. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fun. And, and I don't think when did men become into satisfying every horror yeah. It's like it's become normalized. Yeah, it's it's yeah. sold. Yeah. So I, that's my prediction. Okay. Brilliant. And if, if, I my... buy six, if I buy six robots, it's gonna, he's going to be called Jack. My wish, my wish for the year, is to move away from all of that and to start saving this planet for crying out loud. <laughs> we didn't yeah, even go okay. to the environment, did we? <laughs> well, my wish for the year is to re remove probably three quarters of my belongings. Out of yeah, my life. yeah. Well, is that what you're going to let go this year? Well, I'm just, I'm already, I started doing it in December, January. I'm still doing it. I'm reduced. I'm feeling that like things that I used to have, like, like you know, I used to sell a t-shirt. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had over 300 t-shirts and I gave away half, like three quarters of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a big thing for me because I used to think in my head that I can't. But mm. now that they're gone, I don't, you know, you don't notice that they were, they're there because I never wore them anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing that a lot more now. I'm removing things I don't use. Yeah. I, I want to I go one step further than that and I want to let go of collecting the things I don't need. Yeah. 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 Like someone said that 2021 is going to be the year that we all learn to live and have all our belongings in a bag. Oh, that'd be great. You know, you don't need much. You can just pack it and just go. You don't need to have 
things on the wall or things around you. Not that we have anywhere to go yet, Joe. (laughs) But, you know, I could go into your house. (laughs) All right, Kim, thank you so much. That was really good fun. It was lovely. Thanks, Joe. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.